Padres battled the Red Sox and the rain. And San Diego came away with their first ever series win against Boston. The Atlanta Braves come to San Diego with a four game winning streak and the second best record in the National League. Come to the ballpark and you too may encounter something you've waited for your whole life. Welcome to Petco Park. It is game one. This is the only non-interleague game going on. Enjoy senior circuit baseball. Game one of three between the Atlanta Braves and the San Diego Padres. Don't look now, but the inmates are running the asylum. Mark Neely <laughs> along with the Hall of Famer, Tony Gwynn. Tony, Petco Park is definitely a pitcher's park. We can't deny that, but you wouldn't know that from the production the Atlanta offense has had here over the last seven seasons. Yeah, no question. I mean, you look at the numbers here since 2004. The 17 and 10 record doesn't really surprise me. The two stats that, that do are the, the 5.9 runs per game here in Petco Park and the 40 home runs. I mean, these guys have come in and basically hit like they have at, at Turner Field in Atlanta. They haven't changed anything. Anything here, Hayward hits a ball down the left field line for a home run. Uh, Chipper Jones, same thing to right center field, the deepest part of the ballpark. Uh, and, and Brian McCann's another guy who's had a lot of success against the Padres. So the fact that they're having the kind of success that they're having with their pitching that doesn't bode well for the Padres. They're going to have to put some runs on the board in order to compete with them. But if they pitch well and can shut these guys down a little bit, then they got a chance to win this series. But you're right. It's their pitching that's been carrying them recently in their four-game winning streak coming in. They've given up a total of four runs. Let's take a look at the pitching matchup for this game. For the Braves, Derek Lowe is winless in his last eight starts. And Tim Stauffer has allowed one run total in his last three starts. The pitching matchup is brought to you by Discount Tire, where America saves on tires. Well, Stauffer has been given seven total runs of support in his last seven starts. Can the Padre Bats make life easier for Stauff tonight? Opener of a three-game series, the Padres and the Atlanta Braves, and we still have the meeting going on at home plate since it's Game One of the series. Going over the ground rules, 
Carlos Tosca, one of the coaches for the Braves, along with the Padre manager, Bud Black. Let's get to the Atlanta lineup brought to you by the Prize Patrol, presented by Jerome's Furniture. Text winning to 269 411 to enter. Jordan Schaefer is the center fielder leading off, followed by Hayward and Jones. And in the cleanup spot, Brian McCann is, at least as far as the full package, Tony, about as good as it gets in the National League. Absolutely. And uh, he's just starting to hit his stride. You see, he's got a six game hitting streak, but. You know, we've talked about it before. In this ballpark, he swung the bat extremely well, and you're right. I don't think there's a better catcher in uh, in the National League. There's Freddie Gonzalez in his first season with the Atlanta Braves. He won't say this, but we will. He's probably happy to be out of Florida, the way things have been going. <laughs> They've lost 20 of their last 22 games, and their managerial situation is back up in flux. I think he's done a super job with this Atlanta team. You know, they're really not swinging a bat as well as they thought they would, but their pitching has been so good and find themselves four games out of first place is uh, pretty amazing. Padre starting pitching profile is brought to you by your San Diego County Cadillac dealer. Stop in today for an attractive lease or purchase offer. And Tony, if you're just going to go on recent results, this guy's the ace of the staff right now. I, you can't argue with that. I mean, every time he goes out there, he gives his team a chance to win. I hadn't gotten a whole lot of offensive support, but uh, you can see the numbers all the way around are really good. So the Padres come in with a 32 and 44 record, 10 games back. Well, winners of their last two, taking two of three at Fenway against the Red Sox. While Atlanta, 10 games over at 43 and 33. They have won four in a row. On the heels of the Phillies, Atlanta four games back of Philadelphia, and the Phillies in Atlanta have the two best records. In the National League, Atlanta trying to continue to keep the heat on the fills, and there is their team leader. No question. <laughs> Larry Wayne Chipper Jones. And I'm sure uh, Freddie Gonzalez is happy to have him healthy and in the middle of that lineup, starting to swing the bat. Pretty good. Yeah, okay, you mentioned the healthy at a right abductor strain recently, and He's one of several players that have recently come back for Atlanta. The one they are missing, though, is Martin Prado, and we'll talk about that more throughout the telecast. There's the defense behind Tim Stauffer tonight, brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Call 1-800-NEW-TIRE. Hey, Ryan Ludwig leads the National League in outfield assist with eight. Mabins in center with Venable and Wright. Gonzalez and Rizzo on the corners. If you were with us during the holiday of the pregame show, no Chase Headley tonight. As he's battling a bad shoulder that he aggravated in the last game against the Red Sox. Back home again for the Padres who need to make this more of a home field advantage at Petco. Yeah, and and hopefully that as the weather starts to warm up, hopefully that will happen. 14 and 26 at home this year, 500 on the road. Jordan Schaefer takes the first pitch outside, and we are underway from Petco Park. 67 degrees at game time tonight. Schaefer takes the strike. Jordan Schaefer. Only 231. He's bumped the average up recently to that mark. Padre infield defenders come in at the corners. Next one from Stauffer is up high at 86 miles per hour. Schaefer recently had a career high five hit game. That came on June 16th against the Mets. Follows it back. Two and two. Braves on the road this year, 21 and 16. Though they do have a losing record against the West Division, seven and eight. Breaking ball pulled foul. This is a rare second trip to San Diego this season for the Braves. They took two of three here early in the year, and then the Padres went to Atlanta and took two of three. I was checking my notes because I, I know I did that first series when they came out here, and I, was, I brought a different scorebook this time, but uh, I knew they'd been out here before. Well, like we talked about in the open, during that three-game series earlier this year here at Petco, the Brave Bats were busy scoring 18 runs in the three games, which is about right on par with the Braves' production here over the past seven seasons, averaging about six runs a game. 
it's just amazing that they could come into a park that you know, was universally looked upon as a pitcher's ballpark and basically have the same kind of success here that they've had at home. You know, hit the ball out of the ballpark, averaging six runs a game. You know, that guy right there, McCann, has really swung the bat as if he was one of the home guys. Schaefer sends a 3-2 pitch to left field. Ryan Ludwig drifts to his left to make the catch. And that's the way this one begins. Padres in Espanol is presented by the Ascot Shop, serving San Diego with fine men's fashions for over 60 years. Visit them in La Jolla or at ascotshop.com. Brings up Jason Hayward. Who's another one of the former wounded to recently come back for the Braves. He returned on June 15th from the DL. With a right shoulder injury. First pitch right back off of Stauffer and it'll trickle behind the mound and Bartlett picks it up and Hayward has an infield hit. And Todd Hutchison the head athletic trainer giving a look from the top step towards Stauffer. The Tim Seems to be okay or not showing it. Yeah. Down ball right off the middle. Looked like it hit him in the, in the right calf. And, you know, when you get hit in the calf like that, trainers, pitching, coach, coaches in general are going to watch a little bit closely now to make sure that uh, Tim's okay. One on, one out for Chipper Jones, who sprays it into left field for a base hit. Ludwig cuts it off. Down to second is Hayward. And on back-to-back -back pitches, it's back-to-back -back hits for the Braves. Jones didn't waste any time. That time got a ball out over the plate. And just flipped that ball into left field, or serve it into left field. Stayed back on it nicely. So Stauffer, after needing eight pitches and dealing with the game's leadoff hitter, Jordan Schaefer, now has to face the cleanup hitter for Atlanta, the catcher, Brian McCann. Bartlett comes in behind the runner, Hayward, but he's back safely. The daylight play. Well, right away, Stauffer here is, is going to be tested now. You've got Learn two guys on facing Atlanta. It's probably their best offensive guy. And now you're going to be throwing some stressful pitches here, trying to trying to get McCann to hit a ground ball. Trying to, trying to throw a pitch to get yourself out of this inning. So. The problem is McCann has been hitting a lot of fly balls, a lot of long fly balls recently. He has homered in four of his last five games. He takes outside 2-0. and oh. And the other thing is, you know, he's, he's been around. He's going to be real patient and, and try to work himself into a count where he can kind of figure out what he's going to get. And this is Brian McCann. This is exactly where you want to be. 2-0, and oh, guys in scoring position looking for a pitch to hit. Pulled foul pass first, had him out in front there. Off speed, 2 and 0. Of yes. Stoffer not going to give in. Throws him the 2 0 changeup. McCann's out in front. Puts it in a good spot. It's down. You see McCann basically said, hey, 2 and 0, I'm going to be aggressive here. And he got way out in front of that ball and, got, and, and rounded it foul. Two on, one out, just underway in the Atlanta first inning. Now low, three balls and a strike. Again, we talked about patience there, two and one. He throws him the fastball, but it's out of the zone. He can patient enough to take it. Put himself again in a count where he can be aggressive. Double play ball, maybe. Yeah, Bartlett Spears out at second to first. They get two. Wasn't an easy turn. Bartlett had to make a good play to get to that ball. 6-4-3 ends the inning. Padres turn their 79th 
double play of the season. And San Diego coming up. Is home of the free alignment. Venable leading off again at right, followed by Bartlett and Hudson. And Ryan Ludwig in the cleanup spot has ridiculously good career numbers against tonight's starting pitcher for the Braves, Derek Lowe. Nice numbers. Venable leading off, and the first pitch outside from Lowe, the starting pitching profile brought to you by Bank of America, setting opportunity in motion in San Diego to help our community and economy. Well, when you're facing Derek Lowe, sink or slider. And line into left center field, a base hit for Venable. Sink or slider is going to be the recipe tonight, and when you're facing a sinker baller like Derek Lowe, you want to get him, want to get him up in the strike zone, just like Will Venable did. He got a ball out over the plate. See, that ball is elevated, and he just goes right with it, doesn't try to pull it. That's to me is one of the reasons why Will Venable is swinging a bat good right now is that he's using the whole field. It's not looking so much for the ball in on the inner half of the plate. He's got his eyeballs out on the plate. And that was a nice piece of hitting right there. Venable lit off the last Padre game in Boston with a home run. He leads off tonight with a single. Mason Bartlett has had limited career at bats against Derek Lowe, but he is three for five lifetime against him. Bartlett able to start the 6 4 3 double play to get out of the top of the first. He had the benefit of the catcher running, though, believe it or not, Tony, that's only the sixth double play that McCann has grounded into this year. Yeah, I, well, I think you touched on him. He's not really a ground ball hitter, he's more of a fly ball hitter, but. He hit that ball right on the button, and I wasn't sure if Bartlett was going to be able to get enough on the throw to Hudson to actually turn to there, but uh, he was able to get back on his feet and underhand flip to Hudson, and he turns it over to Rizzo, and they turn two. William back standing up. Aubrey's hoping to continue the string of winless starts for Derek Lowe. There goes Venable, pitch grounded to short. And the only play for Gonzalez is at first. So Venable on the move, Bartlett grounds out. And Venable in scoring position with one out. Here's the Atlanta defense brought to you by North County GMC, a Southern California tradition for over 20 years. And a pretty good Atlanta defense, just 46 errors. On the season with Clout, Schaefer, and Hayward in the outfield. Jones and Freeman on the corners. Gonzalez and Ugla up the middle with McCann catching.
Manager Freddy Gonzalez. His team has won four in a row. And a lot of total of four runs in those four games. So it has been their pitching. And they lead the majors. The staff ERA of 3.03. Yeah. And they've always pitched, and, you know, this year is no different. And Derek Lowe has been, you know, one of those guys that hadn't gotten a whole lot of support. And, and you figure he, you know, he try to shut the Padres down here and not allow them to score because the runs are probably going to be at a premium, although we touched on the fact that the Braves have had no trouble putting runs on the board in this ballpark. Yeah, we talked about that, averaging six runs a game over the last seven seasons of their trips here, which is that just one of those inexplicable things? I think it is. It's just, uh, you know, obviously these guys come in here and they don't worry about the the stories that are being told about Petco. They're just swinging a bat. And you know, the biggest thing is if you're trying to hit line drives, usually you get a good pitch to hit. It's, you know, you're going to have some success here. Chopper towards the middle. Frozen for a moment was Venable, but he will advance to third as Hudson is thrown out by Gonzalez. Two down. Ludwig comes up. His numbers have been crazy good against Eric Lowe. Our comparison is brought to you by the San Diego Toyota dealers. We've got what it takes. Ryan Ludwig has what it takes. Four career homers against Lowe. He's hitting 563 against Lowe. And in his last seven appearances, last seven at bats against Lowe, he's hit three home runs. Wow. Well, I think Ludwig's a low ball hitter. And, you know, Derek Lowe, sinker baller, keeping the ball down in the zone. First pitch hacking. That's where you want to keep it on Ludwig. It's, you, know, you want to mix it up, and mix that slider in there and keep it down and away from him. But Sinker down low, a ball and a strike. April 25th, right here at Petco Park. Low against Ludwig. And with the blue uniform on, Ludwig parks one. Slow roller towards third is foul. So that home run we saw him hit was a hanging slider in the middle of the plate. Thus far, Bear Glow's been able to keep that slider down and away from him. Eric Lowe winless in his last eight starts. He is 0-2 with six no decisions in that span. His last win came at Philadelphia on May 6th. See, as long as he keeps this slider down and away like that, usually he's not going to have a whole lot of trouble from a lot of hits. Tough to elevate that pitch. Yeah, and, and the other thing is you can't try to pull that pitch. If you're going to try to hit that pitch, you're going to have to try to go the other way with it. Venable at third, two outs, no score in the San Diego first. Ludwig takes strike three. Lowe gets him looking. And fans his first Padre hitter of the game. Padre strand Venable at third.
is this Sunday, June 26th at 105. Kids 14 and younger take home the Padres batting glove presented by Cox Channel 4 and stay after the game for a free batting clinic. You can get your tickets today at Padres.com. First pitch swinging, fouled back by Freeman. You are participating on some level in that batting clinic. Yeah. Sunday. I'll tell the kids what's going to happen and give them the basics that we talk about up here. Get in position, get a good pitch to hit. Sky down the left field side and into the seats. By Freddie Freeman, if you had to pick a National League rookie of the year on this very date, June 24th, would he be the guy? I think so. Uh, he's really uh, come on strong here. He's gotten up to 268 now. And, and again, with young hitters, that's kind of what happens. It kind of takes them a while to kind of figure out how this major league thing works. And, and they usually give it more credit than it deserves. And then after a while, they kind of figure out, you know what, I could play at this level. Down in the dirt to Freeman. Anthony Rizzo, is he he's facing another, some of those things, same he's, hurdles? He's going to have to face those. And he's finding out that, uh, you know, they're pitching him a certain way and getting him out a certain way. And just like Freddie Freeman's taking those last two breaking balls and hadn't swung at them. Well, early in the year, he was swinging at that. Going back to the bench, that natural progression, it takes a little while to kind of figure out, you know, how this game really works. Well, it's gone from 0-2 to 3-2 in the payoff pitch. You know, the ground is short right at Bartlett. That's a pitch that was up, but Freeman hit it right at the shortstop. One out. The thing that I like about so many of these young guys in the big leagues today is, you know, they realize that they don't have to pull the ball to have success. You saw him basically spit at those two breaking balls that were out of the zone. He got a ball up in the zone, tried to take it the other way and hit it hard, but it was just right at the shirt. I always like hearing you say, because you're not like a lot of guys who played in the past that say, oh, it was much better in our day. I've heard you say many times, you know what, the pitching from the starters to the back end of the bullpen, oh, yeah. better today than it's Absolutely. ever been. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I have this discussion with my son a lot because Back in our day, I mean, maybe you saw one or two guys that threw 94, 95 miles an hour. I mean, every staff. Look Look out. A whirly bird headed into the seats. Gentleman got himself some lumber. I mean, he tossed that thing a long way. And luckily, that fan got his hand on it and was able to deflect it enough where it got to a space where nobody was sitting. That doesn't happen every game where a bat goes <laughs> flying in there and you can, hey, I get to take this home. Oh, now they're going to try to finagle now. Well, that's his game bat. And what we'll do is if you give me that bat back, we'll give you another bat that we don't use in a game. Time to do some bartering. A little bartering, and, and, you know, they don't like you to sit in the stands with a wood bat either. It's a strike on the outside corner. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Aspect of it. So let's go put this thing <laughs> away somewhere so you can enjoy the game and, yeah, bat day at the ballpark when I was a kid was a little crazy because they used to give them out before the game. Yeah. That probably wasn't a great idea. Yeah. Douglas strikes out. And that's the first K for Stafford. Here's Stafford. Looks like he took a little bit off of that. Dan Ugla out in front of that. Two outs, base is empty for the Braves shortstop, Alex Gonzalez. Braves people love this veteran. When they made the trade, getting rid of Uniel Escobar, they really felt they needed to get better defensively up the middle, and Gonzalez does that for him at short. Absolutely. He's one of the best defensive shortstops in the game. He really makes playing the position look easy. Not a bad hitter. Seven homers on the year. And we recently did snap an 0 for 19 string. With a double earlier in the week on Monday. To me, that's how hard the game is. I mean, 0 for 19 really isn't that, <laughs> isn't that bad, you know. Stoffer trying to paint that outside corner with a 93 mile per hour fastball and didn't miss by much. And that he thought he got that. <laughs> he was already on his way to the dugout. A little two-seamer. Yeah. Pitch track says it was outside. 
But he gets Gonzalez swinging. So back to back strikeouts for Stauffer, who sets the Braves down in order in the top of the second. Three up, three down for Stauff. Rizzo, Maven, and Hundley coming up. These Braves at 535 and the first 25,000 fans in attendance receive a free Padres beach towel presented by San Diego County Toyota dealers. Get your tickets today at Padres.com. Outside ball one to Anthony Rizzo batting in the five spot tonight. One big league home run. Though he had two balls at Fenway that, believe it or not, would have left Petco Park, but didn't leave Fenway because he hit him to the triangle in right center field. Yeah, well, either, any park, I think, in America, those, other than Fenway, those balls are gone. Down the left field side, fair by a few feet. Into foul territory, McLeod picks it up. Rizzo chugging for second to throw in, is cut off. And a leadoff double for Anthony Rizzo, his fourth of the season. Well, Anthony Rizzo, a young hitter. How did he adjust here to Derek Lowe? Wow, he did a nice job. Just the fact that he went the other way. Fastball away for a ball. Again, trying to get the outside corner, and he goes out there again, and you can see him pitch track. That ball wasn't a strike, but again, it was a ball he could handle. It was out over the plate. He didn't try to pull it. He went with it. Lined it in the left field for a double. Yes, you mentioned our Carl's Jr. pitch track showed he saw three pitches out of the zone, but takes that the other way for the two base hit. Cameron Maben, center fielder, looking to bunt him over and bunts it foul. And McCann is trying to sell the plate umpire Dana DeMuth that it hit him while out of the batter's box. Ooh, the leg kick. That's, that's an unusual one. And that ball almost did hit him almost out of the batter's did, box. Yeah. That's just trying to keep Chipper, Chipper Jones back at third base. Doesn't want to square. And take a chance on you know getting the ball down the line and, and not only getting Rizzo to third, but you know beating it out and getting a base hit. Maybe off the end of the bat will do what he initially intended to do, and that's advance the runner. Rizzo over to third, so a productive out from Cameron Maben. He reached for that ball to hit it to the right side. And there's no question that's his intent here. It's a, kind of a hanging slider, but he's out in front of it. And, and you know what? I'm just going to get this runner over to third base and get him in a scoring position. And so he does his job. He gives himself up to get that runner over to third. And now the Braves are going to bring the infield in because as we've talked about, you know, runs are Probably going to be at a premium, you would think, tonight with both of these guys going, Stoffer and Derek Lowe. 
First pitch to Hundley hits the outside corner. Two twenty four is Nick Savage with three homers. And is driven in thirteen. Check swing. Appealed. Asked for the appeal. And down to first base. Kerman Danley says he held up. Such a tough situation to hit in here because you got a sinker baller on the mound. You know, as a hitter, like we said, you want to try to get a ball up. You want to try to elevate a ball. But you're also trying to get that run in from third. And so. You need to turn on that. You run that little sinker down and in. And, and there glows right where he wants to be. He's ahead in the camp. Probably going to try to get Nick Hundley here to chase something out of the zone. And, and again, if you can cover it, if you can handle it, like we saw with Rizzo 2 and 0. He had a pitch to hit there, but fouled it off his leg. And that sinker that he runs in on right handed hitters. And this is a battle where you're facing a guy that uh, you. I think the Padre guys have faced a little bit. Not like interleague play where you're facing a guy that maybe you hadn't seen or hadn't had a chance to face. You faced Derek Lowe before. And again, the key is going to be elevation, trying to get a ball in the middle of the plate. Nick stays away from that slider that was off the plate. That infield in, there's still some holes to shoot at. They bring the infield in like they had. The range is a little bit limited here. A 2 2 pitch. Old foul. We got double by Rizzo. He is at third with one out. Two count on the Padres catcher Nick Hundley. Nick on the ground and through the hole. By the drawn in third baseman Chipper Jones. It scores Rizzo. One nothing San Diego. That's an outstanding job by Nick Hundley. Again, Lowe makes the pitch he wants to make. It's a sinker down in the zone. Hundley's out in front of it, but he Puts enough barrel on it to get it by Chipper Jones. See, it's a good sinker out over the plate. Not a strike, but hits it in the perfect spot for the base hit. And he gets the job done. And that's why as a hitter, you got to love hitting with the infield in because you have opportunities like that to maybe not square a ball up and put it in play and get the job done. 14th RBI for Nick. And he's given the Padres the early lead. Some run support for Stauffer, who's only received seven total runs of support from his offense in his last seven starts. Beck hasn't received a run of support at all in his last two starts. There's Tim waiting on deck. You know, as a pitcher, you can't really worry about the offensive guys. You hope that they come around, but he's breathing a little easier now. He's got a run on the board. Gonzalez getting the start at third base for Chase Headley, who's out with a bum shoulder. Day to day right now is Chase. And no disrespect intended to Alberto Gonzalez, but Chase Headley's really been swinging the bat well lately. That's a shame. Popped up on the right side. The second baseman, Ugla, is under it. And that's the second out. Well, here's Stoffer. Not a bad hitter. Look at the 181 career average. He's hitting 208 this season, 5 for 24. Sinker for strike one. Stoffer in three of his last seven starts against National League teams has gone 5 for 13.
the 385 mark in that span. Doesn't hurt. You can help yourself. You can swing the bat just a little bit. Swing and a miss at the delivery from low. Strike three taken to end the inning. Second strikeout for low, but the Padres get a run on the Hundley RBI base hit. And after two, lead one nothing. With Padres All You Can Eat seats. The menu includes Wiener Schnitzel hot dogs, popcorn, peanuts, soda, and water. Get your all you can eat seats at Padres.com or call 619 795 5555. Mark Neely, Tony Gwynn, and our Channel 4 crew from Petco Park. We're into the top of the third. Padres lead 1 0. And Stauffer faces the 8 9 and 1 hitters for Atlanta. The fielder Nate McLeod leads off. Breaks his bat, rolls in left side. Gonzalez was playing in several steps. He throws out in the foul fan. One pitch, one out in the Atlanta third. Well, those first pitch outs. Good fast ball running away from McClough. Breaks his bat. Just the easy ground ball. Stauffer will face his counterpart, Derek Lowe. Takes a pitch, it's a strike. Well, takes a strike in the high outside corner. Derek Lowe, after seeing McLeod see only one pitch, I think Derek Lowe wants to make Stauffer work yeah, a little a bit little more bit. than that. Takes outside, two and two. Paint on the outside corner in 92 mile per hour fastball and the third strikeout for Stauffer two outs. Padres baseball is brought to you by the Lincoln Room downtown's newest hotspot on fourth near Horton Plaza serving honest food and drinks at prices Abe would love. Top of the order for Atlanta center fielder Jordan Schaefer.
Schaefer saw eight pitches to lead off the game. Eventually fly to left. Stoffer's just been impressive working ahead. I mean, you know, coming out and throwing strike one. And mixing all his pitches up. He's throwing the breaking ball for a strike. Good two seamer. Late swing and a miss, and he strikes out. Four strikeout for Stoffer, who makes quick work of the Braves in the third and has now set down seven in a row. It's the midpoint of the third. One nothing, San Diego. Permadonics, Southern California's premier dental implant center by Hughes Marino because where you do business matters. And by Cox High Speed Internet, power all your devices with the fastest internet in San Diego. Got to get rid of that June gloom. Just it snuck up on us. It, it has. Yeah. Sun was out. And Starting to cloud up yep. again. Will leading off the third. Padres have put the leadoff hitter on base each of the first two innings. William let off the game with a base hit to left center. It's interesting to hear Will chatting with Jenny Kavner on the Honda Dealers pregame show tonight, talking about his recent time at AAA. And he said, hey, you, you, there wasn't an epiphany, there wasn't anything else. I just had to fix my swing. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it looks like he's fixed it. It's much better. You know, that, that last pitch was the pitch that he'd had a lot of trouble with. That ball that was in off the plate. He just had a whole lot of trouble recognizing it. Slow roller towards short. Gonzalez fields. Throws. Safe. That's the other aspect that Will brings to the table is his speed. And beats that throw from Gonzalez. And the leadoff man is on for a third consecutive inning tonight. And he'll take it. You know, Love made a good pitch, sinker away. And he beat it in the ground to shortstop. And luckily for him, he didn't hit it real hard, but he recognized he had a chance to maybe beat this out, and he clearly does beat it out. And that was an 0-2 pitch, yep. so he's protecting there. No doubt. He dives back to the bag. Will 12 steals, and he has been caught twice. And this is what you love. You love that leadoff hitter getting on. And now he's got a chance. He could possibly steal a bag here. You could play hit and run. It just gives you a few more options. lowe has been working out of the stretch most of the night. And that's down low. Jason in the first round, it out to shorts. Will takes off. It's a pitch out. McCann, not a good throw, and Will steals it anyway. Well, it looked like McCann threw a two-seamer down to second because it sailed to the right side. Yep. Will still got a pretty good jump. 
Pretty good jump. See if can step out there. Just kind of gets away from him. I was still trying to put the tag on him, but wasn't able to get it down on Venable. He's already sliding by. And again, Padres playing for, you know, situation. Bartlett squaring up, get, trying to get the bunt down, trying to get Venable to third base. Give themselves another opportunity to score a run on an out. Down it away and speared by McCann. It just makes me wonder if when Maven tried to bunt, was he bunting on his own, just trying to do the right thing? You know, Bartlett tried to bunt on the last pitch, and then the, and then the pitch after, he wasn't bunting. He would look like he was swinging. Chopped up the third base side foul. A concentrated effort by hitters just to try to... Play some small ball yeah, here. Yeah, they're trying to give themselves every opportunity to put a run on the board. But I've always gotten the impression, you know, watching the Padres play here the last couple of years, they don't like giving up. They don't like giving themselves up. Now the right field side foul. In other words, they don't like to to give the opposition an out to get a guy in scoring position. They'd rather do it some other way. And you saw Venable steal second. And you saw Bartlett, hey, take a shot at maybe getting him to third on a bunt, but he didn't succeed. And, and so he's not, he hadn't gone back to that. He's trying to do it the other way. He's trying to get a ball out over the plate that he could hit to the right side. Fouled out of play right side. He's taking a shot at trying to hit this ball to the right side. And again, when you play baseball that way, usually good things are going to happen. We saw that the last two games in Boston where they, they executed really well and were able to put runs on the board. And it looks like they're trying to continue that here at home. Right field. Hayward will make the catch. Venable tags. He'll make it to third. Standing up. So Bartlett does advance the runner. Venable is at third with one out. And again, that's not something you're going to see in the box score, but his teammates recognize that, and that's why all those guys are on their feet. See him. Concentrated effort to try to hit the ball the other way. And he backs it up nicely, backs it up enough to hit a fly ball deep enough to right field to get that runner over to third base. And and again, I, I will take this situation all night. Man on third, less than two outs, infields in. Give myself a chance to drive in this run. Hudson hits it slowly to first. That's foul right near the bag where it's picked up by Freeman. And everything about that, as ugly as that last swing was by Hudson, Almost it would have got the job yeah. done. It would have got Venables going on contact. It would have been able to get the job done. And that's the luxury you have when you're hitting in this situation. Usually if it's right at somebody, that's probably not going to be enough to drive to get the run in. But if you make them go to their left or right, a step and a half or two steps, usually that's going to be enough. Inside O-Dog, who lined one over the Green Monster at Fenway Park the other night. For his first Padres home run. Just off the inside corner. Two balls and a strike on Hudson, who grounded to short his first time, but came in with a 325 career average against low. And watch his ball three outside. Is that first pitch Hudson showed a lot of patience here not chasing anything. Looked itself ahead in the count. And it's outside ball four. The runners at the corners with one out. That's going to bring up for the Padres the guy who's had the most success career against low and that's Ryan Ludwig. 
even though he was called out on strikes in the first inning. His career average against Lowe has gone from 563 to 529. When he gets that high, it's hard to keep it up there. <laughs> 400 was hard enough. Yeah, huh? Oh, man. We're in the 560s. A little low for ball one. Well, the best pitch that Ludwig saw in the sequence his first time up was the pitch he took for strike three. Yeah. He's after a couple of sinkers in and a couple of sliders away. No one's over for a strike. Padres leading one nothing. Rizzo doubled leading off the second and later scored on a Hundley base hit. Padres threatening again here in the third. First to third with one out. Ludwig hits a bouncer towards short. Gonzalez out at second. Relay to first. Safe and a run scores. Well, Ludwig didn't hit it all that hard. And Ugla is relay to first. Bounce once before getting to Freeman. And Ludwig gets his team leading. 46 run batted in. And it's almost the curse of a sinker baller. He makes a good pitch. Ludwig's out in front. Bounces it. A short, but it's not hit hard enough for them to turn the double play. See Ludwig running hard to beat this out. Ugly not able to get enough on the throw. And Ludwig beats it out and drives in the run, and they're up to nothing. Rizzo, who doubled and scored the first Padre run, takes a slider for a strike. Off the outside corner. What do you see hitting wise from Anthony Rizzo, Tony? I think early on, I thought he was pressing a little bit. His swing had gotten kind of long. He encouraged the last couple of games in Boston. I thought he swung the bat really well. You see, they're just not going to give in and give him fastballs. They're going to make him, they're going to force him to learn how to handle some off speed stuff. First time up, he was ahead in the count 2 0. Got a ball off the plate away and hit it to left. And since then, no fastballs. To right field, Hayward comes in. The Padres do add a run on only one hit in that inning. That was the infield hit by Venable to get it going. After three, 2 0, San Diego. And it involves the Braves. Who was the only player to have his number retired by the Braves before they moved to Atlanta? The first year in Atlanta was 1966. If that helps you. 
Hayward leading off. And an infield hit off. Literally off Stauffer, his leg. In the first inning. Breaky ball pulled foul. Just foul. Nice play. It look easy down there. And you got the pod squad playing deep. Step right out there. No problem. Got in front of it. Yep. Got in front of it. <laughs> Wasn't scared of the short hop. Buried the one two pitch. Jason Hayward. Came off the DL June 15th. Missed 18 games with a right shoulder injury. Just a hair inside, and it is a full count. Hayward last year finished second in the National League Rookie of the Year voting behind the Giants' Buster Posey. First major league season selected to the NL All Star team as a starter, but he did not play. You may recall that he had a left thumb injury at the time. Going to be a good play. Wave and a miss. Three consecutive strikeouts for Stauffer. And now five in this game. It looked like he took a little bit off of that, like a, like a change up. Hey, what out in front of it? Seems to have had a little bit of. Ah, it looked like a split thing. Yeah. Haven't seen that. Is that a split to the arsenal? I guess so. I guess that's what the replay showed. Check swing foul by Chipper Jones. It was fun to go down to the Twins clubhouse after the game. Stauffer pitched there at Target Field. Just to hear them talk about Stauffer, and they were very complimentary. And the, the main term I heard was that, hey, he knows how to pitch. Mm -hmm. Tough. Right side, Rizzo will make the shovel to Stauffer. And that was the point I was going to make is that he looked so comfortable out there. He really trusted his stuff. That last at bat to Hayward, he threw a couple of breaking balls that he wanted to bury down in the dirt, trying to get him to chase it. And he put it right where he wanted. Didn't get him to chase. And when he needed to make a pitch, he was able to make a pitch. And so I think this year he's really grown up and really gotten confident with his stuff and really believes in his stuff. Believes he can get guys out. Drops low ball one to Brian McCann. McCann came up with two on one out in the first and grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. Saw McCann blink in the eyes. He's one of those guys that's had uh, he's had at least one, if not two, of the LASIK surgeries to help his sight. It's fouled. I remember last year he was wearing glasses. He had glasses yeah. on. One two pitch. Broken bat, and with the infield shift on, that's Bartlett on the right side of the infield. He throws him out, so that's a 6 3 put out of McCann. That cost him some lumber. Stoff rolling. He's set down, 10 in a row.
trivia question for tonight. Name the only player to have his number retired by the Braves before they moved to Atlanta. They moved to Atlanta in 66. The answer, Warren Spahn had his number 21 retired. He began his career in Boston, went with him to Milwaukee in 53. People may not remember Warren Spahn. Actually, his last year, he split between the Mets and the Giants in 65. Wow. 64 was his last year with Milwaukee. Well, one to Cameron Maben leading off. And Warren Spahn won 356 games as a Brave. So, I, yeah, that's going to get your number retired. Yeah. Popped up right side. Freeman in the coach's box. One out. Won 363 games total. Inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1973. Signed his first contract out of high school with the Boston Braves for 150 bucks. Of course, that was in the late 1930s, so 150 bucks back in 1939. It's pretty good spending cash back right then. <laughs> I could do something with it. <laughs> yeah. Strike to Hundley, who drove in the first run of the game in the second. Now the Braves have won three World Series, one in each of the cities they represented. Ground ball to third. Chipper Jones waits, throws. Two outs. Braves won uh, one World Series in Boston, the Miracle Braves in 1914. One in Milwaukee in 57, and of course in Atlanta in 95. Won 14 consecutive division titles, did the Braves between 91 and 05. 2005, that is. And I played a lot of those years with, <laughs> against those teams, and they were really good. Yeah, three of those NL division titles were the NL West. Yeah. And then 11 in the NL East. Think about the travel you used to have to make. I know. It's when Atlanta and Cincinnati were in the West. These guys today, I'm sure, complain about going to Colorado. Some of the trips <laughs> that they have to go on. Yeah, we. Alberto Gonzalez chops it left side. Jones cuts that off. And Derek Lowe has a quick inning. His first three up, three down frame of the night. We have finished four at Petco, San Diego two, Atlanta nothing. San Diego, the home of the on vacation Mark Grant is brought to you by Murray Lampert Construction. Home remodeling with no upfront design fees. You can visit MurrayLampert.com and click on request a quote to schedule an in home consultation. 
First pitch swinging. Freddie Freeman fouls it. Right side. Freeman in the second let off and grounded out to short. Brinky ball is outside for a 1 1 count. Freeman, who's from Orange County, went to high school there, second round pick of the Braves in 2007. 2007, made its debut in 2011, and to me, that's one of the things that this organization, Atlanta Braves organization, does really well is develop their own guys. Up it in with the 91 mile per hour fastball. Freeman was the Braves 2010 minor league player of the year. He had 319, 18 homers, 87 RBIs with triple leg Gwinnett. Ooh, ooh. Right over by Dan Ugly, the on deck hitter. With that two seamer, he tried to sneak it back on the inside corner. Freddie Freeman realized late, <laughs> late, real late, that that ball was going to come back. And really did it. He did a nice job of fouling <laughs> that ball off. And then I said, well, I'll, I'll stand over here. I'll watch from the dugout. The strikeout of Freeman, sixth for Stauffer. One away in the fifth. Well, the Braves used a lot of homegrown products during a lot of their playoff runs. But in 1998, the last out, this was October 14, 98, when Trevor got Michael Tucker to fly out to Steve Finley in center and send you to the World Series. Yeah. That was an awesome moment that night. PT getting a hug. We were up 3-0 in that series, and they came back and won the next two, and we were going to Atlanta, and it was all doom and gloom. Everybody thought we were going to give back a 3-0 lead and came back and won. Made you sweat a while. Yeah. I don't think any of us were happy about having to go back to Atlanta, <laughs> but we, we thought we could win. On the ground foul past third. And then you got what you considered to be the biggest city of your career was off David Wells in yeah. Yankee Stadium. Going to New York, I remember distinctly sitting on the bus telling guys, hey, we're going to Yankee Stadium. <laughs> we're going to play in the World Series in Yankee Stadium. Doesn't get any bigger. That takes, nearly takes the mask of Hundley off. You mentioned Yankee Stadium. We were talking about Fenway because of the, the last Padres series there. Your trip was there for the 99 All-Star game, which mm -hmm. you were injured. Yep. And that was, was that the first time you'd ever been to Fenway? First, first time I'd ever been to Fenway. You know, you, you make up your mind, you, I was going to go. I didn't, you know, whether I was injured or not, I was going to go. Was and that because it was at Fenway? It could, yeah, of course, yeah. That's exactly the reason it was and at Fenway. The All-Century team didn't, and Didn't know all the and, other yeah. stuff was going to happen. I knew the All-Century team was going to be there, but, you know, it didn't really dawn on me until we got there. And, you know, in the middle of batting practice on Tuesday, the day of the All-Star game, Slow roller hit off the bat of Ugly charged by Bartlett close but got him at first. When we were at Fenway, Eddie Barnes, our producer, showed the video of Ted Williams doing yeah. the ceremony of first pitch, and you're standing just to his left. And it, it seemed like you pointed to him basically to show him where home yeah, play I was. Yeah, I did. He didn't know. He couldn't. He didn't. He wasn't seeing quite well. And again, I. I didn't know until the middle of batting practice that Mr. Williams had asked that I'd go out there with him when he threw out the first pitch. So. Uh, and I had done it in San Diego a few years earlier, so and I didn't know it was going to turn out to be just like one of the greatest moments in All-Star history. You had the All-Century team there, and you had the All-Star guys there, and then here's Ted Williams standing on the mound. And nobody wanted to leave. Nobody, everybody was talking and just having a great time. Yeah, everybody got around the mound. Yeah. Yeah, Ted Williams, they brought him out in the cart, and uh, and I distinctly remember him asking Mark McGuire if he ever smelt burnt wood <laughs> yeah. when he swung the bat, you know. And, he said, yeah. And Mark was like, yeah, yeah. of course, you know. And, and uh, Pal Rifkin was there. Ken Griffey Jr. was there. You know, Nomar was creeping in. And, you know, all of a sudden they started having this conversation, and it just – Nobody wanted to leave, and they basically the PA guy got on and told us we had to clear the field so we could play the All Star <laughs> game. And it was, you know, one of those moments that I think if you saw it on TV or if you were there, you would remember forever. And that's how it is, definitely with me. I'll always remember that. 
3 1 pitch to Gonzalez. Chopper over the pitcher, Stauffer. Bartlett to first to retire the side. What I love about that is when you talk about Ted Williams, sometimes you call him Theodore, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Williams. I love that. Great moment, huh? Yeah. Nah. Where's home plate? <laughs> right there, Mr. Williams. Presented by Harris Rincon Cons Casino for Grand Slam is hit this inning. You could earn huge cash. You can enter at 4SD.com. 32500 dollars tonight. The Padres hit a grand slam in this inning. Stauffer leading off. He takes outside from low. 2-0. Stauffer called out on strikes his first time. You know, not to diminish what the Braves did do in winning the World Series in 95, but 14 consecutive division titles. And whether fate worked against them or not, to only win one World yeah. Series, and that is fluky. It's hard to believe. I mean, as good good of teams as they had, as good of pitching as they had. Yeah, Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, you know, Avery. They well, had. Without the Jim Lairitz homer. In the 96 series, they probably yeah. beat the Yankees that yeah. year. Yep. At least they had some like they were on their way to, yeah. 2 2. And Stop puts it in play. The shortstop, Gonzalez. Well, when you beat the Braves to go to the World Series in 98, you mentioned this as being your most memorable hit when it came off Boomer Wells. Oh, yeah. My favorite hit of all time is. Uh, I think Greg Vaughn took one to left. Didn't even get a chance to sit down, and Greg Vaughn hit the first pitch out, and you know, we're up 5 2 in game one, and oh. you thought, we thought this is right where we've been all year long. We're going we're to win this game. If only they had called strike three on Tino Martinez, it may have been a yeah. different looking series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. I never really talk about that, but uh, we can go back and forth on that. Yeah. I, I, to this day, I still think it was strike three, but. I think you could find a lot of people here that would agree with that. There's a strike to Venable. You know, it's funny how something, one play, one call, because Dave Roberts, we were just in Boston. Yeah. If he doesn't steal that base, Red Sox probably get swept, and yeah. instead they don't lose the rest of the season and win the World Series in 04 for the first time in 86 years. That's why in this game, you're right, in one pitch, if that pitch is called a strike, let's say, it's, the game was tied. It was 5-5, uh, five, five, I think it was. 3-2, two, or 2-2 two, two bases loaded, Mark Langston pitching. And 
Yeah, he threw it. I, I took two steps in from right field because I thought it was a strike and it wasn't yeah. called. And next pitch is a grand slam, and now you're down 9-5. Nine, nine so. Different game, different series. Yeah. Well, Lowe's found a bit of a groove here. He retired Venable on strikes. First time he's gotten Willie Wad hits his first two times up. Bartlett is grounded a short and fly to right. Rolled right out to the shortstop, Alex Gonzalez. Both pitchers have found their groove. That's seven in a row set down by Derek Lowe. Well, we have finished off five innings here at Petco Park. Two nothing, San Diego. And pack and save up to 20%. You can pick any combination of tickets. You can use them in one game or across multiple games. It's your choice. Flex 10 pack tickets start as low as $11 and are available in four great seating sections. Get your Flex 10 pack today by calling 619 795 5008. McLeod pulls it foul. She is <laughs> Yeah. Another short hop, played it off the wall perfectly. Two plays of the game for the pod squad. Off the carom. Short hop. Way high to McClough. It's the 8 9 and 1 hitters for the Braves here in the Atlanta 6. Padres leading 2 0, scoring a run in the first. Hundley singled home Rizzo, who had doubled. And added another in the third, a Ludwig Fielder's choice scored Venable. Atlanta with two singles. They came back to back with one out in the first. And then McCann grounded into the double play. Since then, 13 in a row, make that 14 in a row retired by Stauffer. Play. Good pitch. Well, bounced it up the middle, and they will get in position to make the play. And since the first, he's given up absolutely nothing. He's fan six and now faces Derek Lowe, who struck out swinging in the third. On one. Fools the pitcher with the breaking ball. One and two. Earlier, Mark, you were talking about schedules. You just have to play. See you later. All these teams in our division, the Braves, the Astros, the Reds, 
to go along with the Giants and Dodgers 18 times. Mm. So, uh, you know, you were going to Atlanta three times, Cincinnati three times, Houston three times. Yep. Kind of kind of like it is now, except for, you know, you played teams in your division 18 times and teams in the other division 12. So you were going to New York twice, St. Louis twice, where now you go to those cities once and you still play the teams in your division 18 times. Have you seen the ideas thrown out there for the new realignment? I, I have. What is your thoughts on that? My, my, my biggest thought is that I agree that there should be an equal number of teams in each league, 16 in the National League and 14 in the American League. I'm, I'm not sure you go two divisions with, <laughs> you know, with 15 teams in each. Yeah, that would be like the old days, yeah. you know, pre-1969. You're know, adding a wild card to it where, you know, division winner. I'm sure the teams are two teams with the two best records. Well, there certainly seems to be an inequ inequity if you're in the National League Central yeah. and you're competing with five other teams to win a division, where in the American League West you're only competing with three other right. teams. That's, yeah, and that's why I think this conversation is starting to be had now because... That's hit by Schaefer to left center! And a tumbling, diving catch made by Cameron Maben. Maben with the defensive play behind Stauffer. 16 in a row retired by Stauffer. You can get free admission to the San Diego County Fair when you show your Padres ticket from either Sunday, June 26th or Wednesday, June 29th. Enjoy Padres baseball and the fair. Get your tickets today at Padres.com. And if you're driving in the area on I-5 around Rio de la Valle, give yourself plenty of extra time yeah. because traffic is a bit congested these days there in that area. Waving a miss by Orlando Hudson. We're into the sixth. The home half. 2-0 San Diego. Hudson, Ludwig, and Rizzo batting in the Padres half. Lowe's 1-1. Hudson in the first. Grounded out to short. In the third, he walked. Tails back to the inside corner. Nice little two seamer that we've seen both guys utilize tonight. Off the foot of low, but it carries right to Ugla. And a 1 4 3 put out of Orlando Hudson. 
Well, we have some Aussies here. Those young men between the ages of 15 and 18 are from Australia. They are part of the Australian Southern Stars USA Tour. They're here for three weeks. They were at UCSD today for a clinic in which Arnold Bob Scanlon was involved tutoring. There are 30 players and 17 staff members. This is all done in conjunction with Major League Baseball. They got to meet Josh Spence today, the new Padre pitcher who's yet to make his big league debut, but is from Australia. 30 players, 17 staff members. I can see everybody down in Australia. Parents like, oh, we're going to America? Yeah, sure, yeah. I'll, I'll go along. I'll chaperone. Go to San Diego? You bet. I hope they get a chance to play some games. They are. They are indeed. It's a 1 1 to Ludwig. Down and away. I'm told that they're going after San Diego. They visit L.A., Fresno, San Francisco, and Stockton. Wow. That's a ground ball right to the second baseman, Ugly, who was cheating up the middle. Two outs. So we say good day to our Aussie friends. Glad to have them at Petco Park tonight. Two away for the first baseman, Anthony Rizzo. He doubled to left in the second and later scored the first run of the game. Ripped in the air to right. Hayward retreating and on the run. Reaches up. It's over his head. It bounces off the auxiliary scoreboard. And there's Rizzo standing at second with a two-out double. Well, the way Hayward went back on it, I thought he was going to make the catch because yeah. it didn't seem like he was going full out for it and then reached up and it eluded him. Perfect description because breaking ball and it's a nice swing he puts on this. Beautiful swing. And Hayward looked like he had it all the way and it just like right at the end just was unable to make the play. Rizzo hit that ball on the button and gets his second double tonight. And number five on the season. With two outs, Cam Maben, the center fielder. Sinker down low, ball one. Maben in the first, grounded out to the right side, which advanced Rizzo to third and allowed him to score. He fouled out to first in the fourth inning. All these different stats they have now, Tony. Why can't they have one for productive outs? Yeah. Or maybe there is, and I just don't know about it. There probably is. Yeah, but, you know, you're not going to. That's not one of those stats where you're going to make some extra, <laughs> yeah. you know, some extra money on your. Your agent doesn't yeah. take that into arbitration you know, for he's you. He's moved the runner, you know, 40 times this year. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen. But believe me, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things that the managers pay a whole lot of attention to. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, they keep they keep track of that. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I was a two-hitter most of my career, and there were plenty of times where you just did what needed to be done. You got him over to third, or you hit a ground ball up the middle with a man on third, the infield back, you just put it in play and, and, and try to do the job. Camera taking all the way, three and one. Even has also contributed with the nice catch on the ball hit by Schaefer to win the top of the center. Mm. Inside corner, full cap. He just doesn't throw a whole lot of those, especially the right hand hit. It's a little inside slider. Used to seeing that thing go down and away from the right hand hitter, but every now and then he'll throw one on the inner half. Low to third. Jones has trouble getting it out of the net. Rizzo advances 90 feet. The runners are at the corners. Well, Chipper knew who was running. Cameron yeah. Maben. Even if he gets it out of the mid, he may not have gotten the out at first. Again, that's one of those. That's one of perfect pitch by Derek Lowe. He throws the sinker he wants to throw. 
Maven comes over the top, and the only way Chipper was going to throw him out was to come up with that ball cleanly. And you see it not really able to get a good grip on it. It's a good view right there. That ball almost came out of his glove completely. Maven's infield hit is the sixth San Diego hit of the game. His base is empty, two outs. Now it's first and third, two outs for Nick Hundley. Sinker low, ball one. Nick had a very good at bat in the second, his first time up. He singled to left, driving in Rizzo with the game's first run. Before we get another pitch, the Braves pitching coach, Roger McDowell, trots to the hill. Jairo Cincio on the right, George Sherrill, the left hander, on the left. So activity in the Atlanta bullpen. This could be a conversation. Do you want to pitch to Hunley? Or would you rather pitch to Gonzalez on deck? Like you said, had a great at bat the first time up when he drove in the first run. So right here, he wants to make a quality pitch, and if you walk him, you walk him. Maven tries to steal second. I'm sure that was a part of the discussion, too. Now the two out double by Rizzo to extend this inning. Into the string and nine in a row sent down by Lowe, who's over 90 pitches. Looking to me like the answer to that powwow was, let me pitch to Gonzalez. That's what I would think, too, is that you know, if he chases something out of the zone, okay, so be it. But if I walk him, that's okay. I'll take my shot at Gonzalez. There is a base open. It's second base. There's a strike in the outer half. Gonzalez, who's on deck, 0 for 2 tonight against Lowe with a pop out and a ground out. Again, 3 1 here. He's behind in the count, but he really doesn't have to throw him a strike. And doesn't. Maven took off with the pitch. So a walk loads him up with the third baseman, Alberto Gonzalez, with Freddie Gonzalez. Braves manager looking to stay with his starter here. Good numbers with runners in scoring position. He's popped a second and grounded a third. And hits it down the right field side. It scores Rizzo. Maven racing for the plate. The throw by Hayward goes to third base. It's a two run single for Alberto Gonzalez. It is 4 0 Padres. And I was just getting ready to say this situation's. Taylor made to look for something out over the plate. I'm sure Derek Lowe didn't want to elevate a ball, but see that ball ran back towards the inner half of the plate, and he does a great job of just going the other way with it. And now a 2 0 lead turns to a 4 0 lead, and now. Stauffer trying to get in the act, and he does! Hundley to the plate, the ball overrun by Schaefer. Gonzalez to third, 5-0 San Diego. Fourth RBI of the year for the Padres pitcher, Tim Stauffer. It is a single and an RBI, and error will allow Gonzalez to go to third. Again, sinker elevated. Outer half of the plate goes right up the middle with it. Offer helps himself and extends the lead to 5 0. So, with the lefty Venable in the top of the order coming up, the Braves will bring in the left hander, George Sherrill. Lowe's night finish after five and two thirds.
build an outdoor fire pit to enjoy with friends and family. Call RCP today. In the game, 33-year-old George Sherrill. So remember, one and one, good ERA. Only five walks. Not an overpowering left-hander. Fastball, slider, curveball change. Ground ball to first. And Freeman takes it himself. But the Padres had five consecutive hitters reach, all with two outs. And add on three after six. Five nothing Padres. Southern California's premier dental implant center by Goldman Sachs. For all the reasons you invest, mutual funds from Goldman Sachs. And by Hughes Marino, because where you do business matters. Thanks for joining us tonight. Mark Neely and Tony Gwynn from Petco Park, along with our Channel 4 crew. A two-run single by Gonzalez. Stauffer adding an RBI single of his own, and it's 5-0 Padres into the seventh. The wheels fell off quickly for Lowe, who had retired nine in a row, had two outs bases empty in the sixth, and did not make it out of the bottom of the inning. Yeah. Two out double, and single and a walk, and then a two out single. A couple of two out singles for three runs. Two, three, and four hitters for the Braves in the seventh. Hayward singled in the first and fanned in the fourth. Fastball strike one and one. Ripped foul. Pass first. And the hot squad working again. She is not scared. She's three for three down yeah. there tonight. A 1,000 fielding percentage. Stauffer comes into this frame with 11 consecutive scoreless innings. And he's allowed one run in his last 29 innings pitched. The unfortunate thing for Stauffer, the one run he allowed in his last start. Got beat one nothing by the Twins. Yeah. Is 3 2 to Hayward. And up the middle of base hit. And Hayward singles on a 3 2 fastball, and he is 2 for 3. Time for our leaderboard. Brought to you by Los Primos, home of the Monster Burrito. Get your $5 meal deal for a limited time only. Now, this is coming into tonight. Lowest team batting average of the month of June, and the Braves at 225 have the lowest. The Marlins, who've lost like 20 to 22, then the Cubs. Giants and Phillies Braves and Phillies have the top 
two records in the National League, yet offensively, they've had some issues yeah. this month. And it just shows you how good their pitching is, too. The fact that both of those teams are you know, hitting Brace Case 225 and the Phillies 237, and yet the best two records in the National League. Got to have pitching. Kind of hard to outslug everybody 162 games. Yeah, well, it's it's about pitching, too, but it is about executing, too. When you get those opportunities, timely hitting could be just as effective, too. And that's, you know, I think that's why the Padres, people feel like the Padres, if they can get a little better timely hitting, that they could jump right back into this thing. Which because, is one of the attributes that this team had last year. Absolutely. Because they do have pitching. And I still think they have the best bullpen in, in the National League, too. So, you know, if you can figure out runs, ways to put runs on the board, then you can, you, can, you can have as good a chance as anybody to win games. Well, you mentioned the timely hitting. Even though the Braves' team batting average coming into 239, they're second in the league with runners in scoring position at 270. That's yeah. the definition yeah, of the time yeah, Absolutely. Hits. If you can, you know, so what if you're hitting, you know, 240 as a team? If you're hitting 260, 270 with runners in scoring position, you can take your, if you've got good pitching, you're going to win games. Well, nobody out in the Braves' seventh and a 2-2 to Chipper Jones, and he reaches, swings, and strikes out. Eight strikeouts for Stauffer. Good tailing fastball, it looked like. That was a swing from Chipper, like, let me get a piece of this and hopefully see another pitch. Try to foul that off and, yeah, and get another pitch. Braves cleanup hitter at the plate and catcher Brian McCann. McCann in the first rolled into a double play and in the fourth grounded to short. Still over 300 though on the season. Foul pass first. She's four for four. <laughs> <laughs> Tough hop there too at the end. She stayed with it. Ryan McCann has been selected to five consecutive All-Star games. In fact, he was the MVP last year in Anaheim. He had a three-run double, which proved to be the game winner. The National League's first win since 96. Balls gets up in the Padres' bullpen. You might as well write it down. He's going to be in the All-Star game again this year. They get six in a row. Yep. High drive, center field. Maven on the move, back to the track to make the catch. A pitch up, and McCann flies to deep center. Two outs. Coming up, the San Diego Hyundai dealer seventh inning stretch. You can get more MPG, more value, and double the warranty. Shop online at San Diego Hyundai Dealers.com. I think McCann would like to have that breaking ball back, have another shot at that one. Well, he's 0 for 3 tonight. Freeman is up 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. Breaking ball, ball one. Yes. We do baseball for Stauffer. He's at 96 pitches, so not all that far away from 100. Offer went 97 pitches through seven innings in his last start at Minnesota. Two starts to go through 111 against Washington. That's his most pitches in an outing this year. I'll tell you what, you'll definitely take seven shutout innings if you can get it. To right towards the corner, Venable on the run. That ball just foul. 
Off the bat, I thought that was going to be a fair ball. Yeah, it I did just too. enough. Stayed back. If I got a changeup, he stayed on it and hooked it in the corner, and it was oh, just foul. About a foot foul. Not all that far from the short porch. Yeah. The way the 111 pitches, two outings ago for Stauffer, not only a season high, but a career high in the single outing for Stauffer. Three and one. Lead off base hit by Hayward. He's at first with two outs. Five nothing Padres in the top of the seventh. Belted foul left side and a full count. Well, a few times Stoffer's been behind in the camp. 3 1. He came right at Freddie Freeman. Fetum challenged him with the fastball. And Freeman was late. Hayward takes off and a high fly to center. That's deep. Maybe back at the fence and gone. Eighth of the year for the rookie Freddie Freeman. And the Padre lead is cut to five to two. One of the eyes 28 29 for Freeman. That ball right there was up. 3 2 pitch. He did not miss it. He put a short stroke on it with two strikes. That's a nice swing right there by Freddie Freeman. 100. Five feet away, straight away sent. So Stauffer's consecutive scoreless inning streak ends at 11. The seventh home run he's allowed this year. Strike call 0 2 on Dan Ugla. Freddie Freeman leads all National League rookies in homers, hits, doubles, walks. And he's gotten the Braves on the board here in the seventh. Ball at 91 is outside. Ninth strikeout, which is a career high for Stauffer. But Freddie Freeman's two run home run to center. Time to stretch. 5 2 Padres.
Game show from the Channel 4 studio tonight with John Weinsbarth and Bob Scanlon. Saquon Casino getaway for the day at Saquon. Third pitcher of the night for Atlanta, right hander Jairo Asensio. See the numbers? High ERA, but hadn't had that many innings of work. He'll be trying to hold the fort to give the Braves a chance to maybe get back in this game. Part of the order for the Padres in the seventh. Bartlett leads off. Stauffer had retired 16 in a row before the leadoff hit by Hayward in the seventh. And two batters later, Freeman home run. But a nice night again for Stauffer. At least to this point. Absolutely. Seven innings, only two runs, only four hits. And between those two hits he gave up in the first and the two hits he gave up in the seventh, it was really good. No pie to Bartlett, and it's 3 0. Oh. Jason is grounded a short twice and also fly to right, 0 for 3. Taken for a strike on the fastball. Line to right, Hayward. Oh, did he catch it? He did off the shoe tops. Jason Hayward robbing Jason Bartlett. Job all the way around. Bartley ahead in the count, three one. Lines it in the right to see Hayward take that right off his shoe tops, right off the ground. To get that glove underneath that ball and make the play. One out for Orlando Hudson. First pitch strike. Orlando has gone 0 for 2. He walked in the third. These teams opening the three game series tonight. 535 first pitch tomorrow. Dustin Mosley will go against Jair Jurgens. And then Corey Lukey. She's 5 for 5 now. Yep. Lukey makes the start on Sunday in the 105 game against Tim Hudson. Lukey pitched well the other night, even though he took the loss in Boston, threw 50 pitches, and Bud Black said before the game, I'd like to see anywhere between 50 to 75 pitches out of Lukey on Sunday and keep stretching him out. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how he does in that role. Another liner to right. Thought we were going to see an instant replay of the ball hit by Bartlett moments ago with that. Skips to Hayward, who knocks it down, and Hudson has a base hit. Hudson did a nice job with that fastball. It was kind of up in the zone, and boy, he got on top of that. Hit that with some top spin, and enough top spin that Hayward didn't think that he could get in there and make another shoe string catch. If he would have tried at that time, he and Schaefer would have been chasing that to the auxiliary yeah, scoreboard, been, right? Yeah. Sometimes as an outfielder, it's just a good decision. You don't try to make a fantastic catch. You just play it on a hop and keep it in front. Outside to Ludwig. We knocked in a run with a fielder's choice in the third. His team leading 46th RBI. Hudson dives back. Orlando 11 of 12 in steal attempts. Successful his first 11. Caught in his last attempt, which was in Boston, but the replay showed he got the left hand in. And yeah, I was watching. Should have been called safe. The 11 steals, though, a career high for him in a single season. See, that's surprising to me. I, I, as a career high, I, I thought so too. I thought I'd see somewhere yeah. in the upper 20s. Yeah.
Could just be the influence of Dave Roberts over there at the first base coaching box. Yeah, I think Doc's had a positive influence on a number of Padre base runners. Well, not just the act of you know straight stealing a base too, but I think they've been much better going first to third, and, you know, just being aggressive coming out of the box and trying to pick up an extra 90 feet. Like when Davey Lopes was over there and they had the stopwatch. He just would not allow you to be complacent. They were always talking about times and kickoff times and catcher's times and forced you to want to be aggressive over there. Ludwig sends one deep left center. Schaefer retreating off the very top of the fence. Hudson heading home. He will score. Ludwig. Just missed his 10th home run of the year, but he gives the Padres a 6-2 lead. Well, we need to get a look at this on the freeze cam. How close this was to getting out. Freeze cam brought to you by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Half ball up. Boy, he got on top of that and drove it to center field. Let's take a look. Right off the top of the fence. Right off the top, and it bounced straight up. It didn't bounce back towards the field of the play. It bounced straight up. So that tells me it hit right at the crease. Yep. Schaefer had to go get it. Hudson able to come around and score. So Luddy literally just an inch or two away from leaving the yard with that one. But he has knocked in two tonight. The Padre lead back up to four. Voto Rizzo. Well, watch the Padre bullpen. That ball bounced to the air. And they're like, oh, how did that not go out? That close. Hey, you what, until it hit that fence, they sure didn't look that excited. They were just. Yeah. No big deal. They, yeah. They were stone faced. Yeah. Now they're going to put Rizzo on to bring up the right handed hitting Maven. So Rizzo. Who's doubled twice and scored twice tonight? Is intentionally walked for the very first time in his major league career. He's probably standing at first base thinking, you know, I'm only hitting a buck 80 yet. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't want to pitch to me. Yeah, I think Anthony's finding his groove a little. You take the, the last few swings he yep. had in Boston and tonight. Yep. Two on, one out, a run in in the Padres' seventh. Here's Cameron Mabern, the center fielder. To the alley and left center field, and they're going to run a while on this one. Ludwig trots in. Rizzo, he'll score. Mabern to third, standing up. It is 8 to 2 San Diego on Cameron Maven's team leading fourth triple of the season. Boy, he hit it to the perfect part of the ballpark. Nobody was in left center field. See, this ball is up and out over the plate, and boy, he lines it in the left center field. And you talk about guys running easy. Maven, easy triple. Rizzo, for a guy that big, runs pretty good. RBI 17 and 18 for Maven. He did, did not break stride, just nice and easy. Atlanta brings the infield in with Maven at third and one out. Maven a miss by Hundley. Hey, Stoff's finally getting some run support. I guess they're all coming in one game. He's got more support tonight than he has in his last seven starts combined. His offense had scored him seven runs in his last seven starts. They've scored him eight tonight. And he said, you know what? I knocked in one myself. Yeah. So. so it's only oh, even. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. seven for seven. All right. Good point. Nick Hundley hitting in the same situation he was hitting in in the second when he 
singled in their first one. Infield's in. Difference this time is different type of pitcher on the mound, not a sinker baller. The eight runs scored by the Padres tonight, the most runs they've scored in a game at Petco this season. Wow. Hopefully this is a good sign. Hopefully this is the start of them doing a better job on the offensive end. Fouled by Nick. Well, the only out of the inning was the shoestring catch by Hayward on Bartlett leading off. Since then, the Hudson and Ludwig base hits. Ludwig nearly hitting one out after the intentional walk to Rizzo. Maven with a two run triple. Padres have 11 hits. Swing and a foul tip into the middle of McCann. It's a strikeout, two away. The Sky Camp shot brought to you by Mossy Ford and Mossy Toyota. Visit us in Pacific Beach or online at mossy.com. 27,227, the announced paid crowd tonight. Alberto Gonzalez has a big hit in this one. Yeah. Two, uh, two run single his last time up. He leans out out of the way of ball one. I think his hit really is the biggest hit of the night. I mean, it's two nothing game. Really, they pitched around Hundley to get to him. And he hit the first pitch in right field for a base hit to make it four nothing. Drive in a couple of runs. Upstairs again, two and zero. Oh. Well, the eight runs, the most they've scored at Petco this year. The 11 hits are also a season high here at Petco Park for the Padres. Padres led 5 nothing going to the seventh. The McCann homer in the top of the inning trimmed it down to 5-2, but Randy Reddy's offense has answered that and more. With the three spots so far in the bottom of the seventh. Strike on the outside corner. The only Padre in the starting lineup without a hit tonight is Bartlett. That's strike on the inside corner. Three and two. Venable has two. Rizzo two doubles. Babin now two hits. Down the right field line, but going foul. And I think they've done a really good job with guys in scoring position, even though. Like Bartlett doesn't have any hits. He's hit the ball on the button and his bat this inning and did a great job hitting the ball to the right side to get a runner to third. Breaking ball chopped over the mound behind second, backhanded by Ugla, throwing the dirt, and Freeman can't come up with it. Maven scores, it's 9 2. Well, that had trouble written all over once yeah. it bounced over the mound. Right, it's bounced that ball right up the middle, and Ugla had to back up, back up, and backhand that ball, and throws it in the dirt at first, and Freeman can't come up with it. Posted hit or air as of yet. That ball smoked deep left. Jesus Guzman has just hit a pinch hit home run.
not batting for the pitcher Stauffer, his first career home run. Guzman right, jumped all on that. Fastball up in the zone, and boy, he was all over. And he knew he got it, too. Well, Guzman, who just joined the Padres on the last road trip, launches his first major league home run. By the way, they have charged an error on Ugla on the previous play, so that's going to make these last two runs unearned. It has been a six run inning. Saw Guzman going down the tunnel to the clubhouse. Thanks for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks yeah. for coming. He's probably going <laughs> to look Mike at that Tompkins one. room. Yeah, yeah exactly. to take a look at that one again. Mike Tompkins, Jesus Guzman is headed your way. <laughs> so one out of Venable. Strike with a breaking ball in the inside corner. It's the first Padres pinch hit home run of the season as well. Last Padre pinch hit homer came from Matt Stairs September 18th of last year. Well, maybe not, I guess. Let me get something he'll, to drink. He'll save the video for later. Yeah, he's, got, he's had a big smile on his face since, that, since he's hit it. That's not going to wear off for a while. No, I don't think so. Yeah, that first one. Remember, we hit your first one off of. All right, I'm going to ask you then, who was your first? Uh, <laughs> Bill Campbell in Wrigley Field. Really? Yeah. Off soup. And uh, my teammate said it didn't count because it went in the basket. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you pull it to right? Yeah, I did. Must be. One of those games the players will play when you're sitting on the bus going somewhere and you're in the middle of nowhere and guys will start going around. Who'd you get your first home? Who'd you get your first hit off of? Who'd you get your first home run off? Of? Three-two pitch to Venable. And the Padres are batted around here in the seventh. Comes Freddie Gonzalez and Jairo Asensio will not face a tenth batter in this inning. Braves will make a double switch and bring in a new pitcher. We'll tell you all about it when we return to Petco Park.
Kepler for the Braves. Our pitching profile brought to you by RCP Block and Brick. Build an outdoor fire pit to enjoy with friends and family. Call RCP today. Martinez, the new hurler. 3-0-2. Good ERA. Good opponents batting average. Only hitting 200. Asensio wasn't able to keep his team in the hunt. Now Martinez is out to come in here. Brooks Conrad, the local product, takes over at second base as part of the double switch. So Conrad batting in the nine spot, vacated by the pitcher. And Martinez in the six spot, which was occupied by Ugler, who has departed. Bartlett let off the inning with a sinking liner to right that Hayward caught at the shoe tops. He is 0 for 4 tonight. The only Padres starter in this game without a hit. Eleven Padre runs on 12 hits, both season highs for the Padre club here at Petco. With the nine run Padre lead. Freeman the first base but not holding Venable at first. Look out. Almost hit him. The Bartlett does reach base for a first time tonight with a walk. This is very uncharacteristic of Freddy Gonzalez's pitching staff. Yeah. Came in leading the majors in ERA at 3.03. Now the last two runs scored in this inning are unearned, but all the others are earned runs. Just not used to. I'm sure he's just not used to seeing these big run innings like he's seen tonight. And from what we showed at the top of the show, Petco Park is where Atlanta has had a lot of success mm -hmm. offensively in the last seven years, averaging six runs per game. I'm gonna give Stoffer a lot of credit. He pitched great tonight. Ida Hudson. At least this part of the bullpen, Asensio and Martinez, the last two guys that they've faced out of the bullpen, neither one of these guys are really hard throwers. They're more finessers, guys that, you know, fastball is going to be in the low 90s, they're going to change speeds. Hudson lines it to center. Schaefer makes the catch. Hudson had a one out single earlier in this inning to get the rally started. But the Padres score six times in the frame. Guzman with a pinch hit home run. That's 11 to San Diego.
defense. Brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. That is Pod Squad Debbie. Debbie Blanchard, who's been red hot down there tonight, Tony. I'll let you break it down. Made all the plays. Especially <laughs> like the short hop. Got her body in front of them. Fielded them all clean. Gets a little fist pump. Down there in the bullpen. Nice job, Debbie. Yeah. Good night. She's five for five on the balls hit her way. Eighth inning, bottom three up for the Braves. And it's rolled towards short, but cut off by Gonzalez. Throws out the other Gonzalez. Alberto throwing out Alex. Padishek, the new Padre hurler. Good numbers, 1-0. 36 ERA. Got a few walks, though. 16 hits, 16 walks. Phones only hitting 222. Right now, you just want to throw strikes. You got a nine-run lead. Work ahead. Cloud with a couple of ground outs. Once to third and once back to the mound. Eleven two San Diego top of the eighth in the opener of this three game series. Four pitch walk from Nishek. You were mentioning the walk, Tony. Well, you don't want to do that. You know, you've got a nine run lead. You make these guys, if they're going to beat you, make them swing the bat. You're not wasting any time. Picking up the phone, giving the bullpen a call just in case. That's the first walk allowed by Padres pitching tonight as Stoffer didn't walk any in his seven innings of work. Conrad came in as part of the double switch in the last inning. Will tonight be the night for the Major League debut for Josh Schmitz from Australia? I'm going to say yes, it will be. With all the young Aussies here tonight from the youth baseball team. Not that they're going to take Nishak out now or in this inning or he's going to get in trouble, but. You know, I'm sure a buddy would like to get him in the game and give him a chance to get a taste of what Major League Baseball is all about. Give him a chance in a non-pressure situation to go out there and get some outs. There's some of the Aussie folks here tonight. Got the Australia hats on. Nishak was seven straight out of the zone here. Even leading by nine, you can get some derisive <laughs> applause if you don't throw strikes. Yeah, a little courtesy, courtesy clap. Three and two. On their last road trip, Nishak had a chance to pitch against his old team, the Minnesota Twins. And she said, well, it was a little unusual. Line caught by Rizzo. Right at him. Fastball up and in. Conrad right on it. Lines it to Rizzo at first. With the nine run lead, Rizzo was playing behind the runner, McClough. Makes the catch of the liner from Brooks Conrad. Now Jordan Schaefer starts outside for ball one. Schaefer is flight out, struck out, and lined out. Foul pass, first base coach Terry Pendleton.
Two balls and a strike. Oh, and Schaefer. Padres have never trailed in this game. Scored a run in the second, one in the third, three more in the sixth. Atlanta got there to the Freeman Homer in the seventh to cut it to five two, but then Padres blew it open with six in the bottom of the seventh. Trying to end Atlanta's four game winning streak and give the Padres a third consecutive win. The job's not going to get easier as this series goes along. Try your Jurgens to Jurgens tomorrow. Yeah, he's having a lights out type of year. Yeah. Yeah, he's throwing extremely, extremely good. Tim Hudson on Sunday, another tough guy. To Half a face. We're talking about those two wins in Boston. They could do wonders for your confidence. Boston, best record in baseball. Going there and take the last two and do it well, playing good baseball. And the question for me was offensively, were they going to be able to kind of keep? Going what they had going at the in Boston the last two days and thus far in this game they were able to do that. Three two pitch and in the air to center. Maven trots back to get under it. A walk and a man left on just the second base runner stranded by the Braves tonight and their first left on since the first inning. TV today to see every Padres game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit Padres.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Ludwig leading off. Ryan in his last at bat just missed a home run off the top of the fence in center field. Settled for an RBI double. He has knocked in two tonight. After a slow start, Ryan Ludwig seems to have found his rhythm this season. I, I think he's a guy that loves hitting with ducks on the pond. He's a guy that. Uh, is a run producer and 
Now the one game in Boston, and, you know, looked like they got in on him quite a bit. Ooh, look out. Breaks his bat. A big chunk of the bear goes flying out by Chipper Jones at third base. I didn't look that bad. It didn't look like he hit it towards the end. It just. Half of his bat went, <laughs> went down the third base line. It's just. It's a short snagged by Gonzalez. Paul looked like it was almost past Gonzalez. He snared it at the last fraction of a second. It throws out Ludwig. Yeah, that's a nice short stroke. He hits it on the button right at the shortstop. But. He's looking like he's swinging a whole lot better. Swinging a little bit more confidence and using a little bit more of the field. Three runs scored tonight for Rizzo. A couple of doubles. He was intentionally walked in inning ago. The glove of McCann. Infielders playing to pull as Chipper Jones well off the line at third. He bounces it right up the middle. The shortstop Gonzalez. Two outs. Maven knocked in two with a triple in his last at bat. He's two for four. His last at bat. Got a ball out over the plate and hit it in the left center field. And really, against this team, that doesn't happen very often where a guy hits a ball completely different than how they're playing him. He got a ball out over the plate and lined it in the left center field, and I mean, it was an easy triple. Especially with those strides that Maven takes. Yeah. Cameron, who just turned 24 right after the beginning of the season. Now, this is a guy who's never had a full season in the major leagues, and before this season began, he only had about a year and a half of big league service yeah. time. And, you know, again, it's. Uh it's that learning process that young players go through is that uh, you know you had some time with Detroit and then he got traded to the Marlins he got some time with the Marlins but you know he wasn't an everyday guy like he like he's been here Padres have given him an opportunity to go out there on a regular basis and here's where he's going to kind of figure out who he is and you know how teams are going to attack him and what he needs to do to attack them point being he's still a very young player yeah well, defensively, he's like he's shown people that he can play center field on an everyday basis. No question there. Sends it to center field. Schaefer drifts back. That takes care of the Padres in the eighth. Last chance for the Braves. They'll send up the heart of the order. Hayward Jones and McCann.
You can therefore deduce that we are now going to see the Major League debut for 23 year old left hander Josh Spence. See his numbers in San Antonio pretty good. There's the Australians there in the red cap. How great is that to work out that there's a contingency here from Australia of young players happen to be in San Diego and they get to see Josh Spence yeah. make his big league debut. He becomes just the second player out of last year's draft 2010 to make it to the big leagues. Chris Sale who was the 13th overall pick of the first round in 2010 actually was the first making his debut late last season for the White Sox. So Josh Spence becomes the second player from the 2010 draft to make it to the majors and obviously the first for the Padres out of that draft. 6 190 pounder from Victoria Australia the state of Victoria played his college ball at Arizona State and was the Padres ninth round pick last June 2010. He went in the ninth round and is the second player to get to the big leagues out of that draft that's pretty good. Talk about support. The bullpen guys who normally are sitting on the bench back there are all along the fence. Well, as, as the young guy, he's got to carry the backpack, right? He's got the yeah, and the Yoda. So, yeah. So now, <laughs> with him finishing the game, guess what? Somebody else is going to have to bring that baby in. Hopefully, he can get three outs. There's Yoda checking it out from the bullpen. Well, two good things are going on here. Spence is making his big league debut. Second, he's pitching with a nine-run lead in the ninth. The bad thing, it's Hayward Jones and McCann. Might as well get tested <laughs> yeah. right away in that first appearance. Welcome to the big leagues, Josh. First pitch, a ball to Hayward. There's his first strike. An 83 mile per hour fastball. Josh Spence called up from double-A San Antonio. And with Lukey going to the rotation now, I believe Spence is the lone lefty in the bullpen. And so far, it doesn't look like Spence is overpowering. That ball will change up. Breaking ball. And he strikes out Jason Hayward. So Josh Spence makes his major league debut by fanning Hayward. They toss that two-minute baseball to the Padre dugout. As a keepsake for Josh Spence. Todd Hutchison has that baseball. Pretty good hitter. He struck out. First batter. And the question is, if he strikes out Chipper, does he save that one? I would. I would. <laughs> <laughs> totally, I would. Just all three of these guys, if I could get them out, I would get all three baseballs. I wouldn't ask for it. I had somebody else ask for me. <laughs> but. Chipper Jones is singled in three at bats. And here's Josh Spence in his first major league game, pitching to Chipper Jones, who's playing in his 2,327th major league regular season game. And it's popped up on the right side for Hudson. And Atlanta down to their final out. But can't 0 for 3. A key early spot in this game. Top of the first. Two on, one out. And Stauffer induced a 6 4 3 double play off the bat of McCann.
see Thatcher there, second from the right. Lefty in the Padre bullpen, but has been on the DL all season. And here is Josh Spence, one strike away from setting down in order the Braves of the night with three players that have all been all-stars in their careers. To the right side, Hudson. The Padres beat the Braves 11-2, and Josh Spence has a clean three-up, three-down night for his Major League debut. He'll never have another first, at least in the regular season. Nice job, Josh Spence. Got another souvenir baseball there. <laughs> hey, Orlando Hudson, how's that heart beating? Nice job. So Josh Spence. It's the final three outs. The Padres win at 11-2. We'll be back with more after this.